How many of you have been to Cave Point? Has everybody been to Cave Point? I think it's one of the most unique places in Door County. Um, there's seemingly a, a never-ending series of unique and beautiful nooks and crannies as you walk up and down along the, the, the cliffs. I want to use that intricate and unique beauty of Cave Point this evening for, as a metaphor for the unique and infinite beauty of our own physical bodies. Our bodies are made in the image of God and the image of God's own goodness. Our bodies are the place where the divine image dwells, and our bodies are worthy of care and blessing and ought never be, to degrade, be degraded or exploited. And so it's through bodily acts that we can live more fully into the sacredness of our bodies and the bodies of others around us. You know, Lent in itself is kind of a good time to think about our bodies and practice of honoring our bodies. During Lent, our bodies are always before us. Remember back on Ash Wednesday, we trace the sign of the cross on our foreheads. We remember in Lent the scourging and of Jesus, his bloody sacrifice on the cross. And we wait for his bodily resurrection on Easter Sunday morning. And we also recognize our bodies somehow during Lent with the little things we give up, whether it's chocolate or coffee or other kinds of sweets. Practices that honor the body help us to live as the sorts of creatures that we really are. In the passage from Psalm 139 that Harrison read, the psalmist writes that we are creatures fearfully and wonderfully made. We are not God, but we are created in God's image. And we are created by God as material bodies for this material world to be material stewards of the material stuff of the world we inhabit. And so practices, practices that honor the body help us to live better as the sorts of creatures we are in an age that encourages us to deny our embodied natures. I think we are subject to twin temptations when it comes to how we think about our bodies. The first temptation is to think about ourselves as only a body and thus invest unholy attention and obsession with our bodies. We're tempted to try to conform our bodies to the image of what the media thinks a perfect body should be, which leads many of us to contempt for our body because it doesn't look like what it's supposed to or, or it doesn't work the way we wish it does or it doesn't work the way it used to. But I want to remind you this evening that our bodies as they are, we are created in God's image. Our bodies are beautiful and they are wonderful and they don't need to conform to anybody else's expectations of what we should look like. These are the bodies that God has given us. So the other opposing temptation, I think, is to forget that we are bodies and to treat ourselves as though we are pure spirit, which leads us to do things with our bodies that, in, as if our bodies don't matter. And so we forget what we eat or drink or smoke or the kind of exercise or activity we engage in and whether or not we rest. But our bodies are a place that our spirits, our souls dwell. And so whatever our bodies do, we as persons do. When our bodies are engaged, we are engaged. And because they are the, mirror, they are the home for the mysterious thing that we call the soul, our bodies are worth caring for and to be treated well. I don't know if you've ever noticed, but we worship with our bodies in baptism, real water is poured over real heads. In the Eucharist, we taste the bread and wine with our taste buds, and we can smell it with our smellers. We shake hands, and we pass the, the peace. We stand up, and we sit down. And we are around other people whose bodies are sometimes smelly or sometimes not working the way they should, and the things they say with their bodies sometimes irritate us. But we live among and with each other as embodied people, and so the church has given us a tradition of healing to remind us of the importance of these mortal frames. 
For just a brief moment, I want you to think about Jesus and his ministry. He patted mud into the eyes of the blind. He touched a leper. He sat at the bedside of the sick and dying. And Jesus, in his ministry, he taught those around him how to see our bodies and how these bodies are granted a glimpse of God's own vision and how God wants us to live. But also in the course of Jesus' ministry, he also received the care of those around him. We heard one of the stories on Sunday of how Mary knelt down and anointed Jesus' feet, his bodily feet, with costly perfume, and then she wiped those feet with her hair. Judas Iscariot was scandalized by what she did. What he believed was a waste of resources. But Mary saw in Jesus' body something that was holy and something that was worth caring for and something something whose value could not be expressed only in money. Mary and those around him realized that Jesus had come from God and that he was going to God and they knew that he had a body that was in danger And so they honored his body with perfume and reverenced his body's fragility with the tears that fell on his feet. Jesus in his ministry reminded us of our task for honoring our bodies, to see our bodies and the bodies of others through the eyes of God, to learn to see the body as both fragile and deeply blessed and a holy vessel of our spirits and the Holy Spirit to remember our body's vulnerability, but also to rejoice in the graciousness of God as a sign of God's abundance and bounty. And through the vulnerability of our bodies, God has given us into the care of one another. And so we honor our bodies and we honor the bodies of those around us. Amen.